Hi, I'm Eddie Park with InnerTest. Today I'm going to walk you through the features of the Yatex P Series Video Bore Scope. Here I have the two main parts of the scope. You have the 8 inch monitor and you have what we call the probe, which includes this entire handset and the shaft you see here. This is a 2.8 millimeter diameter probe. The scope has a motorized articulation that's controlled via the joystick. As you can see, it articulates quite well in all directions. The main buttons you see on the handset, you have your articulation lock. So if I articulate in some direction, I press the button, it locks the articulation. To unlock, you simply press the button again and it'll go back to a neutral position. The next button is your LED control. So as you can see, I have a part here. I'm just gonna go through one of the core passages. Once inside, the second button controls your illumination. There's five levels of brightness, starting from H0 all the way to H5. The next button is your image capture button. Simply press it once to capture an image and you'll see that it appears right here in your thumbnail gallery. The next button is your video recording. Once you press that, you'll notice that it, the timer starts to count up and you are now recording video. Press it again to stop recording video. Under the handle is a trigger button. You can also use this trigger button to capture your still images. So simply press the trigger and you'll be able to capture your image. Again, it appears in your thumbnail gallery right here. You can review that by going back to the main menu, going into Photo Viewer. As you can see here, a folder will automatically be created that shows the date. And once inside, you can then review the still images that you took. You can go next to the video. You can play back the video as such. Keep in mind everything records to an SD card located on the side panel of your monitor. Okay, there are some other features that I'll go over in just a bit, but we're gonna go back to the main menu, go back into your real-time monitor, live view. And once you do that, I'm gonna walk you through the rest of these icons that you see here. So this button right here is your image lock. It locks the image, so as you can see, I'm moving the probe. Nothing's happening because the image itself is locked. That could be useful, especially if you're in these core passages. It's a difficult inspection where you've articulated the probe, and perhaps in a certain direction you see a scratch or some FOD, and you wanna make sure that you don't lose the positioning of the scope. So that image lock can help you maintain the image without losing it. The next icon is your mirroring function. You can mirror the image. This next icon is your negative film effect. So this can help you detect different shades of the surface. Uh, for example, if you're looking for staining. Below that, you have your 16 by nine aspect ratio. This is only necessary for the probes that have HD resolution. Uh, this 2.8 millimeter does not, but the deluxe probes that we offer on the same platform uh, do offer HD. And when you are using one of those probes, you will want to be in the 16 by nine aspect ratio for the proper display of that resolution. So the DM icon here goes into full screen mode. Below here is your grid overlay. You can see it's one, two and four millimeters. This is used for alignment purposes or just to get a general rough idea of the size of say FOD or whatever you are looking at. Below there you have your orientation. So this will rotate the image uh, clockwise at uh, 90 degrees. Under that, you can zoom in to your image. This color palette taps into the exposure setting of the camera. So as you can see here, you're in original mode. This might be useful if say you're in a larger cavity, say you're at maximum illumination and you just need a little bit more light. You can increase the exposure of the camera by moving it to distant mode. When you do that, you'll notice that the exposure is increased and that might be enough to give you enough light to be able to see uh, the target. Conversely, I'll try to show you an example here. If you are looking at one of the walls and the image is a bit saturated uh, with too much light, uh, you can go into proximity mode. And as you can see right there, it 
helps to decrease and take out some of that saturation. So these are, this is a feature that can be useful in certain situations when you need to fine tune uh, the exposure of the image. Okay, so let's review some of the features that are available when you are in your photo viewer, looking at one of the images here that we took. Okay, you can see these icons on the bottom. Within the image, you can also zoom in as needed. You can go to your next image. This is the video that we took. You can delete the image if you want. Uh, we won't delete it for now. Uh, I'll skip this icon for now and just show you this is you can rename the file and save it as needed. Under this icon is where you can annotate on your image as needed. You can draw freehand. You can draw arrows. You can include text. We'll say OK. I'll skip this ruler for now, but you can save the image as needed. You can also change the font size and the colors of the freehand drawing, the arrow uh, as such under here. Keep it as, as it is for now. So this ruler icon allows you to get the approximate measurement of a 2D image. Now, I want you to be very careful on this. This is not a 3D measurement scope. So this will not be an exact measurement. But based on this 2D image, you can get the approximate measurement of an object. So let me explain. Uh, we'll take these two points right here, which draws your line right there. You'll notice the reference value says 433. These are the total pixels that the software is providing to you. Using the actual value of reference here, you tap that and you can input your own value. So say uh, you know that that uh, distance is four millimeters, we'll say. So we'll assign it four millimeters. When you draw the second line and say that second line, you wanna know what the diameter is from here to here. You notice down below here, the measurement, based on your original reference line, which was 433 pixels, the measurement result is 183. Up here, you assign this red line, a value of four, let's say four millimeters. The measurement result right here uh, gives you 1.7, which is a little less than half. So uh, you can see how, it's, how it works. Again, I would exercise caution when you're using this. This is not going to give you an exact measurement, but it's just a tool to help you gauge the approximate size uh, or measurement of a target uh, in your 2D image. Okay, so we'll go back to the main menu here. So in your system settings, you can adjust your language, the picture format, you can set your date and time, uh, and all the basic uh, things that you can typically uh, adjust with your system. And of course, you can shut down by pressing this button here. You can also do a hard reset by holding down the top button here for a couple seconds. You'll notice on the side of the probe that you have these two notches that slide into the side monitor like that. Uh, you'll notice also that you have four sections here where you can strap your neck strap, which is included in the full kit, uh, so that you can hang that around your neck and go fully portable uh, if you want to use this on the floor. So there you have it, the Yatex P-Series. Thanks for watching.